Welcome to the course Business Analytics and Data Mining Modeling using R. So in the uh, previous lecture, we started our discussion on classification and regression trees. So we talked about uh, two uh, steps, uh, recursive partitioning and pruning. And we started our discussion on recursive partitioning and uh, we also started our exercise on the same. And in the uh, previous lecture, so we were discussing about the possible set of uh, split values. Uh, what could be those values and how we can compute them, how we can uh, get an idea about those split values using R. So in the uh, previous lecture we talked about if the variable is numerical, uh, the predictor is numerical, then uh, what could be the possible set of uh, split values. So we talked about annual income and also household area that uh, sedan car data set that uh, we are using for this exercise. So we also computed uh, midpoint values for these two variables and we talked about we have two variables and uh, uh, 19 uh, uh, midpoint values for each of them, 20 observation we have in total. So about uh, 38 uh, predictor value combination we will have and out of these 38 predictor combination if the algorithm, the implementation of that algorithm, if it follows this process then out of these 38 combination uh, we will have to select one optimal one which is going to reduce the impurity. Uh, that means uh, the heterogeneity th uh, that could be there in the resulting partition. So the resulting partition having the least impurity. Uh, that means more uh, you know homoge homogeneous uh, partition. So that particular value combination uh, would actually be selected for first split. So what if uh, the variable, if our uh, variable is categorical? So in, in that particular case, uh, the uh, set of categories uh, that we have, they are divided into two subsets. Uh, so uh, for example, uh, if we uh, uh, have a particular variable, uh, let us say we have this variable. So our values on the categories that are there, they could be this. So uh, from this uh, we have to, we can have uh, uh, many uh, midpoint, uh, many set of uh, possible candidates here, right. So uh, uh, so there could be different, uh, you know, value, the different options here, for example, you know, this could be one. So we have to create two parts from here. So uh, one category will go into one part, the other categories will go into the other part, right? part 1 and part 2. So in this fashion there could be various other candidates, it could be B and others could be here. Then similarly it could be uh, you know C and the others uh, could be here. So in this fashion, there could be many uh, combinations of uh, these uh, splits. So there could be many uh, split uh, value, the predictor and split value combination uh, in this case also. So for categorical variable, this is how we can create uh, you know different uh, different combination of uh, variable and uh, split value. So two subsets, so for each the, the variable four categories A, B, C, D, so uh, all you know two subset combination uh, could be the uh, different values uh, that can be used as the uh, possible set of candidate. Now um, let us talk about the uh, impurity measures that we could be using for uh, in this in this uh, in this particular algorithm classification regression tree. So impurity measures that we are going to cover is uh, are two uh, measures uh, mainly uh, Gini index and entropy measure. So let us start our discussion on Gini index. So so for an uh, so so both these uh, so both these uh, measures whether Gini index or entropy measures so they in a sense measure the impurity. So uh, for impurity for the original uh, rect original rectangle original original group uh, in our in our data, and then once we create partitions, so two parts, part one and part two, for each of those parts, we can further compute the impurity using these matrix. So then later on we can compare 
that uh, the after we have done the uh, a particular partition, but uh, after we have done a particular split, whether there has been a decrease in impurity. So, uh, how how do we measure that impurity of uh, different partitions? So, these are the two metrics which can be used: Gini index and entropy measure. So, let's talk about the Gini index first. So, uh, uh, for an outcome variable with m classes, so Gini impurity index for a rectangular part uh, is defined as this Gini 1 minus summation over k 1 to m because we have m classes and then uh, p k square where p k is the proportion of a uh, rectangular part observation belonging to class k. So, for each class if we have uh, if we have m classes. So, for each class we will have to compute the proportion of uh, observation uh, belonging to that class in that particular rectangular part. So, uh, for example, if, if we had the full original rectangle all the observations and so we can uh, compute the uh, you know for each class, class 1 to m, c1, c2 up to cm for each class we will have to compute the proportion values right proportion of observations uh, belonging to class 1 in that uh, particular rectangular part. Uh, portion of observation belonging to class C2 uh, again in, the, in, the, the, in that uh, same rectangular. So, in this fashion for all classes C1 to Cm we will have to compute the uh, this uh, proportion values Pk and then uh, square and summation of this uh, and uh, so this will actually uh, uh, represent the uh, this will actually uh, the summation of this once we subtract this value from 1 this is actually going to represent the impurity. Right. So, uh, this will give us the uh, impurity index for the rectangular part and once we create uh, partition, once we do a split, we will have two more parts. So, for those two parts again we can use the same, uh, 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 same formula to compute their impurity uh, value and uh, these two parts we can add these two uh, we can add the impurity values of these two parts and then we can compare it with the original uh, rectangular partition and see how much impurity has been reduced uh, because of the partitioning right so this is uh, one particular uh, metric that we can use let's talk about the uh, uh, second mat uh, second metric entropy measure so before that uh, let us understand the uh, uh, values, uh, Gini values range. So, Gini values lie in this range 0, m minus 1 uh, divided by m. So, if there are uh, m classes, so this is going to be the, the range uh, for uh, Gini index. And if there are if there are just two classes, the, so the range is going to be 0 to uh, 0 0.5. Uh, so, for 0 to 0 0.5, so when the uh, how this uh, how we compute these two range uh, when in a two class scenario uh, if the representation of both the classes is equal right. So, in that case uh, the uh, proportion would be 0 0.5 and 0 0.5 for both the classes. Now, if you go back to the expression here 1 minus summation over p k square. So, we have use uh, 0.5 and 0 0.5 for both the classes. Uh, so, you would get that uh, value right. So, the value that you get and then uh, that is going to be 0 0.5. So, that is going to be the highest value. So, when we have the equal representation from all the classes, uh, the value the Gini index value is going to be the highest because there that is the uh, uh, that is the uh, situation where the impurity is uh, where the impurity is highest because the observations uh, belonging to different classes they are equal. If there, if there, if in a particular rectangular partition, if most of the observations belong to uh, one particular class, then of course the impurity is less because very few observations would be belonging to other class. If this, uh, uh, you know, this particular ratio keep on decreasing and uh, becomes equal, where you know uh, the different uh, classes, uh, the observation belong to different classes, they are in equal proportion, then of course the impurity is going to be the highest, and that is also. Uh, you know indicated in this uh, particular range. So, m class scenario the value is going to be 0 m minus 1 divided by m and 2 class scenario the value uh, the range uh, is going to be 0 to 0 0.5. Let us talk about the uh, next metric that is entropy measure. So, uh, for an outcome variable with m classes 
Entropy for a rectangular part is defined as this entropy uh, minus summation uh, over k equal to 1 to m and p k log uh, and log of p k base 2. Uh, so, this is how we compute the entropy value. Uh, so, as we discussed for Gini index right the same thing p k stands for the same thing proportion of uh, class k members uh, in the rectangle in the uh, rectangular part. So, then we uh, compute that value then we uh, take log of it uh, log uh, base 2 of it and then multiply these value and then sum it over m classes and the minus of that is going to be the entropy value. So, the range uh, for entropy values. So, uh, here it is going to be 0 and uh, log m base 2 for m class scenario and uh, 0 and 1 for 2 class scenario. So, how? So, for example, uh, for two class scenario, uh, uh, the highest impurity is going to be in this in this situation when the members belonging to each of those two classes, they are in equal proportion, they are in equal numbers. So, in that case, the PK value is going to be 1 by 2 or 0 0.5. So, if the PK value is 1 by 2, you can plug in that value in this particular ex expression and uh, you will get that log, uh, log uh, base 2 of uh, 1 by 2 is going to be uh, you know uh, minus 1. So, that minus minus they will cancel out and uh, then pk is there uh, then uh, that you will get the uh, uh, 1 by 2 and then uh, for the second the other class also you will compute this value and once you summate the 1 by 2 plus 1 by 2 is going to be 1. So, this is how the range is. So, uh, highest impurity is uh, highest uh, highest uh, impurity scenario is when the all the classes they have equal proportion they have equal representation in a particular rectangular part right. So, that is when the uh, highest impurity is going to be there and that will also uh, give us the range for entropy values and also for Gini index. So, what we will do to understand more about these two particular matrix uh, we will do a simple uh, exercise in R. So, let us go back. So, uh, uh, let us first uh, understand the plot of uh, you know Gini values versus uh, P 1 this which is proportion of observations in class 1. Uh, now, this is for a 2 class. So, let us understand how the plot is going to be uh, depending on how we vary the proportion of observation belonging to class 1. So, uh, let us uh, say that uh, P 1 the uh, this is our se so sequence is the function that we can use to uh, generate uh, different proportions. Uh, so, let us compute this. You can see uh, P1 has been created as you can see in the environment section and if you are interested in looking at the specific values. So, the proportion can range from uh, 0 to 0 0.1 to 0 0.2 to 0 0.3 up to uh, 0 0.9 and then 1. So, uh, against these uh, proportion values uh, P1 values we are going to uh, compute Gini index values and then we are going to plot them. So, as we have as we are already familiar with Gini index formula. So, let us first uh, initialize this Gini variable. So, uh, let us do the initialization and then we are going to run this loop uh, i in 1 to length of p 1 uh, that is uh, 11 uh, values in total. So, for each of uh, those values for each of those proportion values we are going to compute the Gini index. So, this was the uh, this is how we can express the Gini index formula here in R 1 minus and within uh, within parenthesis we have for each proportion uh, we first compute we use the proportion values and they take, take a square of it and then we uh, do a sum uh, and then we add all these uh, values for uh, the all the classes. So, uh, let us compute this you would see that a guinea a vector numeric vector had has been created again 11 values. So, 11 uh, uh, guinea index values. Uh, corresponding to uh, different uh, proportion uh, values right. So, let us plot this and this is the plot gain index versus proportion. Now, from here you can clearly understand as the proportion increases from 0 to uh, 0 0.5 somewhere here you would see that gain index index value is highest and it is 0 0.5 as we talked about right. And as we further increase the uh, increase the proportion, right? 
uh, then again because the p1 uh, this uh, proportion keeps on increasing again then the guinea index value this uh, will uh, start decreasing right so this will uh, keep on decreasing and again uh, when the proportion is 1 this will go to this will become 0 so this is how the values are going to be for guinea matrix guinea index the same thing we can do for entropy measure as well so uh, let's uh, plot and uh, let's plot a graph of entropy versus p1 that is proportion of observation in class 1 so p1 uh, for uh, we have already uh, defined so let's initialize the entropy here now within for loop you can see uh, how we have written the code for uh, calculation of entropy value so you can see for each class we have one expression and each expression we have proportion and then multiplied by log base 2 value of that proportion and uh, once we sum all these expression then we take a minus of it so uh, let's run this loop to find out the entropy values you can see 11 values have been created right uh, you would see that uh, uh, first uh, particular value that is NAN it is showing as NAN uh, this is uh, mainly because the uh, the proportion value was 0 here and uh, log of 0 is not defined so because of that uh, we uh, have got this particular value so let's plot so here you would see that in the plot function we are also using a spline function which will smooth smoothen the plot that we generate so let's see uh, how what is going to happen so this is the plot here so you can see this particular plot is much more smoother than the plot that we had created for guinea index so again here also as we move from 0 to uh, 0 0.5 you would see that entropy measure is this particular value is maximum uh, the value is 1 at 0 0.5 and as uh, this proportion p1 increases further this value goes down up to 0 so uh, this was about uh, the uh, the two uh, matrix uh, two matrix uh, the uh, guinea index and entropy major so uh, let's talk further about our technique uh, classification and regression trees so next important point is the tree tree diagram or tree structure that we create so as we talked about the recursive, recursive partitioning steps uh, so uh, let's uh, understand the tree diagram what is uh, how this is going to be built so for each split of p dimensional space into two parts so that is of course the part of recursive partitioning can be depicted as a split of a node in a decision tree into two child nodes so we can have a root node right uh, we can have a root node Uh, let's say this is our root node and uh, uh, this is the original parti partition then uh, each split that we perform uh, it can be denoted using two uh, nodes here so, right uh, so this is one part one this is part two so in this fashion the split that we are talking about can be created so p dimensional space which is p dimensional space we will start with the root node and uh, this is going to be uh, partition two pa parts are going to be created uh, so this can be represented in this fashion decision node having two child nodes now once we have these two parts these two child nodes then again the same process would be applied on these two parts till uh, you know the so, so the tree will start growing uh, till the point uh, we have created homogeneous uh, partitions or homogeneous groups so first split creates uh, branches of uh, root node so as we can see now uh, two types of nodes in tree structure uh, first one is a decision node so that is uh, depicted uh, with a circle here and uh, then the second one is terminal or a leaf node uh, that is typically depicted using rectangle right so uh, so th these terminal nodes uh, they uh, typically uh, they correspond to final rectangular parts so when we talk about just the recursive partitioning step where we d uh, where we uh, build the full grown tree that means uh, we get uh, pure homogeneous uh, parts so in that case uh, uh, we are going to have uh, you know terminal nodes so for example if this was uh, uh, you know a root node and we created two partitions and uh, 
uh, once we created two partition we were able to achieve the uh, homogeneous uh, rectangles right so let's say further partitioning of this leads to homogeneous rectangles right so we'll have we can uh, represent uh, those uh, nodes because they are going to be the uh, terminal nodes leaf nodes using these rectangles right so these are decision nodes right so predictor and predictor value combinations are going to be applied on these decision nodes and then the terminal nodes would indicate the actual class because this is now pure homogeneous group so it is going to be either class 1 or class 0 class 1 or class 0 so in this fashion the tree structure could be there so two types of node decision nodes and terminal nodes so decision nodes are the one where we uh, apply the predictor value combinations and create a split and the terminal nodes or leaf nodes are the one where we finally end up with pure homogeneous part pure homogeneous group and therefore we can uh, label it with the class name class 1 or class 0 if it is a two class case now let us understand the steps uh, to classify a new observations uh, new observation using uh, tree based models so uh, for a new observation uh, once the tree has been built uh, so new observation to be classified can be dropped down the tree so it can be dropped down from root node and then depending on the uh, different comparison it will take different branches and the finally it will end up with the terminal node or uh, leaf node so first step new observation to be classified is dropped down the tree is starting from root node and at each decision node which uh, so root node, root node is the first decision node so at each decision node the appropriate branch is taken until we reach a leaf node right so uh, for example this is a variable a variable uh, v1 and uh, you know let's say x1 uh, this is x1 and then the corresponding value for this particular you know variable is v1 and the split is created right so values less than uh, v1 they go this side values greater than v1 they go uh, this side two parts right so in this fashion uh, here again we'll have another variable x2 and the value v2 here we'll have x3 and value v3 right and then the observation having value less than uh, v2 will go here uh, greater than v2 will come here similarly for here so in this fashion we will continue uh, till we uh, till the new observation reach, re, uh, reach the terminal node or leaf node where then finally it is going to be classified as per the class of that uh, particular uh, terminal node so finally uh, uh, at leaf node majority class is assigned to the new observation uh, so uh, now this is uh, going to be when we don't have any uh, special class of interest where we are trying to uh, maximize the overall overall accuracy or trying to minimize the overall misclassification error uh, but when we have a, a special class of interest as we have been talking about in previous lectures uh, for other techniques uh, the steps are going to change uh, a bit for example for a class of interest scenario proportion of records belonging to the class of interest is compared with the user specified cutoff value for the same right so uh, for the once you re, once we reach the leaf node typically uh, you know uh, when we talk about the recursive partitioning it is going to be a uh, purely homogeneous partition so there is going to be no such problem but if the uh, if, the, if the, the tree is uh, not fully grown tree it has been pruned back pruning we'll discuss in uh, coming lectures so uh, in that case the uh, the uh, the parties and the leaf terminal node might not be homogeneous and there could be some uh, observation belonging to other classes so therefore how do how do we decide so for when we try to when we don't have any special class of interest and when we are looking to maximize overall accuracy in those situation we can just look at the majority class in the terminal node and assign that class to the new observation but when we have a class of interest we will compute the proportion of records belonging to that class of interest and then uh, uh, 
compare this uh, particular proportion value to the user specified cutoff value because that is the cl class of interest. So, we would like to identify more observations uh, belonging to that class 1 even if it uh, comes at the expense of uh, misidentifying more observations belonging to other classes. So, uh, and so the step is uh, the step final step is going to change depending on whether we have a class of interest or not. So, what we will do uh, we will uh, go through a simple exercise uh, in R. So, let us uh, go back to R. But before that uh, let us also under uh, let us also uh, uh, go through uh, uh, and uh, uh, this exercise uh, where we compute the uh, impurity using uh, two matrix that we talked about. So, sedan car example that we have uh, discussed before, uh, let us look at the summary of this particular ownership variable. So, we have 10 observation belonging to non-owner category and 10 observation belonging to owner category. Now, the different matrix that we talked about the impurity index, uh, how we can compute. So, for guinea index and uh, entropy value uh, for the uh, original, uh, original partition, original uh, rectangle we can compute uh, in this fashion. You can see 1 minus because 10 observation belong to the non-owner category out of 20. So, in this fashion we can compute the guinea index uh, for other class as well. So, this would be the guinea value. For entropy value also we can compute in this fashion. You can see 10 observation belong to owner, uh, non remaining 10 belong to non-owner. So, in this fashion we can compute the entropy value. Now, uh, once the uh, the first split that we had created earlier, let us look at the graph. So, this was the graph you can see here, we had created the first split at uh, you know household uh, area value of 18.8 and uh, uh, from this using this, uh, let us compute the Giri and entropy, and entropy major values. So, uh, from this let us zoom into this particular plot. So, in the upper uh, rectangular part you can see we have uh, 7 observations belonging to uh, the owner class and 3 observations belonging to the non-owner class. So, uh, it is 7 out of 10 uh, to owner and 3 out of 10 non-owner for upper rectangular part. So, uh, guinea for upper rectangular is going to be 1 minus 7 divided by 10 and that is square of that then 3 by divided by 10 square of that. So, in this fashion we can compute the guinea value for upper rectangular. Similarly, for the entropy, uh, you know, entropy value for the upper rectangular also we can compute using uh, similar approach. So, let us uh, compute these two values. Now, if we uh, look at the uh, graph again, you can see that lower rectangular part is symmetric to the uh, upper rectangular part in terms of proportion. So, proportion of observations belonging to the owner and uh, non-owner. So, uh, you know upper rectangular is dominated by owner, uh, lower rectangular is dominated by non-owner, but the uh, proportion th they are very symmetric. So, the values, uh, values for Gini index and uh, and entropy measure they are going to be same. So, why not uh, assign the same values for lower rectangle as well. So, Gini value is going to be same as for lower rectangle is going to be same as upper rectangle. Similarly, entropy value is going to be uh, for lower rectangle is going to be same as uh, that for upper rectangle. Once this is done, uh, so for uh, for split 1, we can compute the Gini uh, index value. So, we will add these two values uh, for upper rectangle and uh, lower rectangular. So, you can see we are also uh, multiplying these value by their proportion here. So, uh, 10 uh, out of 20 observations uh, in the upper rectangular, 10 out of 20 observation in the uh, lower rectangular. So, this will give us the impurity index after first split uh, and for entropy values uh, of after first split. So, you can see in the environment section, so values have been created. EM split 1 uh, around 0.88 and Guinea split, split 1 around 0.42 and the original values also you can see original values were 0.5 GI ORG and EM ORG 1. Uh, so, now uh, we can compute the difference between uh, uh, you know the, the delta that reduction that has happened in impurity. Uh, so, uh, that is 
guinea delta we can compute and em delta so you can see em delta minus this one minus 0.11 around minus 0.12 and guinea uh, delta is minus 0.08 so we can see there is a, a, a there is a, a reduction reduction in uh, impurity so therefore uh, these two uh, the first split is of course going to help us in achieving more uh, has has helped us in achieving more homogeneous parts which is also very clearly visible from the plots as well so in this fashion uh, we can uh, keep on continuing uh, creating partition so uh, we'll stop here uh, and the other uh, partition and the uh, the values, uh, guinea values and the other exercises and discussion will continue in the next lecture. Thank you.